All right. Um, so we're going to talk about something called parametric equations. And I want to introduce this idea uh, by considering the following situation. So I've got a little animation here. Um, we've got a particle uh, moving from um, the point negative two zero to the point negative uh, eight five. And let's say it takes 10 seconds. I don't know if I have the timing perfect, but let's just suppose it takes 10 seconds, okay? Now, we can describe, I think anybody watching this can probably come up with the equation for this line that describes the path that this little particle is on, okay? But um, let's do something a little more complicated. What I'm interested in doing is coming up with a way to describe where it is at each moment in time. In other words, what I'm talking about is a function where I input time and I output position, right? And position in this case is two coordinates, okay? So let's think about this idea and do a little work and see if we can come up with how to, how to accomplish this. So let's go to the paper. I've written down our situation. We've got, we've got our particle moving from this point here in, in 10 seconds, okay? In other words, we wanna have a function, right, whose input gives me the output negative two zero. And when its input is 10, the output is eight five. And I want it to move in a linear way between those two points. Okay, so here's what, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to think about the X and Y motion separately. They're both gonna be linear motion, right? Um, uh, meaning they can be described by a linear function, okay? So this is the neat idea of parametric equations. I'm going to describe this motion using two different functions. I'm going to have a function X of T, which is going to give me the x position or x coordinate at time t. And I'm gonna have y of t to give me the y position or y coordinate at time t, right? We're used to having functions where we input a number, right? That's our symbol for real numbers. You input a number, you get out another real number. Input a real number, output a real number. Now we're inputting a number, a real number, in this case time, and we're going to be outputting a coordinate pair. Sometimes there's a symbol, we go uh, R squared, meaning the set of coordinate pairs uh, of real numbers, okay? So this is a new kind of function um, where instead of inputting a number, outputting a number, we input a number and output a coordinate pair. Let's see if we can come up with these two functions for this particular case, right? So let's concentrate on the, the X motion, meaning the motion in the X direction, okay? I often think about this, if you imagine that, uh, that particle, remember moving across this line from here to here, if you had, if you had a, a uh, light above this thing, its shadow would move from this point to this point, right, in 10 seconds, okay? And we only care about that motion for the X coordinate right now. So let's think about that. I want, and, and remember we said it's, a, it's moving along the lines, so it's gonna be linear motion. So what I know is that this function, this, this, this piece of the function that's gonna tell me about the X coordinate is going to look like a linear function. And I know that when T equals zero, the X coordinate is negative two. And when t equals uh, 10, the x coordinate is 8, right? I want it to go from negative 2 to 8 uh, over the span of those 10 seconds. So this is pretty straightforward. We know how to compute slope. I can do 8 minus negative 2 over 10 minus 0, which gives me 1. We already have the y-intercept is negative 2. So my x of t is just going to be t minus Two, right? Put in zero, I get negative two out. Put in t equals 10, I get eight. 
Let's do the same thing for the y coordinate. We want y of t to be a linear expression. Okay. We want y of 0 to be 0, right? We're just looking at the y coordinate now. Now it's like there's in this drawing, there's a, there's a light coming from the left. So this particle has a shadow across this wall that slowly moves up as the particle moves this, this uh, across this line. We're only caring about the motion of that shadow right now. So y equals zero, uh, y of zero equals zero, y of 10 equals five. So the slope is going to be five minus zero over 10 minus zero or one half. The intercept is zero. So y of t is equal to one half t, okay? So we now have expressions for, sorry, something's not working on my screen for a second, but I'm not sure what to do about it. We now have expressions for uh, the x and the y motion of this particle, right? Let's go back to, um, let's go back to that animation for a second. And I'll put these expressions up in the animation and we'll see, discuss a few more things with that. So we need to go here. All right, so here's our animation. And remember what we had just figured out. We had that x of t was equal to t minus 2 and y of t was equal to 1 half t. Okay, so for instance, let's think about where is this thing going to be at, at uh, t equals 6, the x coordinate is going to be 4, and the y coordinate is going to be three, right? So it's going to be at the point four, three, okay, right? Which is sometimes you'll see people write these. I've been writing these uh, parametric equations as these two, these two uh, separate equations. Sometimes people write them as coordinate pairs because we often mean them to be spitting out coordinate pairs, right? Or I could even write coordinate pairs like this. I get this expression. Again, I've got one input and I've got one output. It's just now my one output is a point. Okay, so we're, we're still satisfying how functions work. You input one thing, you output one thing. We just have a different thing that we're outputting. It's not a number, it's a point. And the thing that we're inputting doesn't have to be the same kind of thing as the thing that we're outputting. So let's see if this uh, if this holds up. Let's look at our uh, animation. Let me see if I can get it to stop. Let's move it to I'm I'm I use the letter A instead of T. But there we are at uh, oh three seconds. That's why it didn't match up. I put in T equals six, not three. Pardon me. So here's here's our input of six, and the output is the point four three, right? Just as we had predicted uh, with that, with our using our the functions we came up with, right? So that's what parametric equations are. That's how we use them. Um, so let's oops, let's go back uh, to the paper for a second and write a few explicit definitions before we move forward. So, okay, so in parametric per, uh, equations, right, so we'll typically have um, we'll see eventually that we are going to use these in three dimensions, but for now, let's stick with two. Um, we'll have something like x equals x of t, y equals y of t. Just pointing out that they're each functions of t, right? Or as I said, uh, x of t, y of t, we may write it this way to really 
emphasize that we're spitting out um, coordinate pairs. Um, Sorry, something in my notes doesn't match what I just did, but I see that I changed my notes. Anyways, okay. Um, so we, we often call, or we do call, we call T the parameter. Okay. And like I said, in this case, we input the parameter, we output a point. Okay, let's take another, let's take a look at some more parametric equations. Here's another example. I could have the functions x equals t squared minus 2t and y equals t plus 1. Okay, so this is a little more complicated than the one we looked at. It's no longer two linear functions, right? We see a, a squared term uh, in that one. And so we might want to try to figure out um, what this set of equations looks like. Okay, so let's do a little bit of work. We're gonna use uh, a little trick here, right? We wanna find, so we're used to graphing things when we have y relation to x, right? If I told you y equals x squared minus seven, you know what that looks like, or if I told you that, even if I told you something like x equals the natural log of y, with a little bit of thought, you could probably figure out how to graph that because we're very familiar with those. But now we don't have them related to each other. We have them both related to this kind of intermediary, this parameter, okay? However, we can use that intermediary to see how they're related to each other. So what I can do, I'm gonna do something called eliminate the parameter. And we do it like this. I'm gonna choose one of my two equations and solve for the parameter. So I'm gonna choose the easier one. This gives me that t equals y minus one, right? I just subtracted that one over. And I can replace t in this expression uh, with the expression I just got here. In other words, x equals, instead of t squared, I have y minus one squared, minus two y minus one, okay? And if you do a little bit of work, what's this gonna be? This should look like uh, y squared minus four y, we'll get a plus one plus two, so plus three, that seems right, okay? And so you can tell from this that it's a parabola, I've switched the roles of x and y, so it's a parabola, um, uh, it's a parabola rotated to the side, right? It should be facing kind of you know, opening to the, to, the, to the right in this case. Let's take a look at this one. There we go. Oh, we're still, they're still open. Close all of, oh, I see, all right, that's from this, all right. Okay, so if I graph that function that we just computed, that y squared, so let's just go ahead and write it. So the function we came up with a second ago was, uh, oops, x is equal to y squared, minus 4y plus 3, right? And we see it's a parabola on its side, right? But the parametric equations, one of the things uh, that the parametric equations do for us is there's extra information. In this case, we're talking about the movement of a particle. It not only tells us the path that it follows, it tells us where it is when. So if you look on the left of the screen, I'm scrolling through values of t, Right, so I've chosen negative five to five and we can see, for instance, at t equals zero, right, it's right here. And then as we continue to scroll through values of t, so this is how we can describe things in motion as opposed ju to just talking about the path that something's on, right? I can now ask questions about where is it when 
um, not just along the path, what path does it travel? So we get some extra information out of this, these parametric equations, right? So they're pretty, uh, they're pretty handy objects, okay? Um, okay, let's go back to the paper. Make a few more comments. So in general, right, we'll do one more example, but let's just say this in general, when we get parametric equations, um, we'll generally have something like this. Like I said, we'll have an X of T, Y of T, and I, I wanna mention one other piece. We usually have an interval that we're talking about, though it can be uh, infinite, but more typically we're looking at motion during some period of time, right? And we'll talk about the initial point, F of A, B of A, uh, F, F uh, excuse me, X of A, Y of A will be our initial point. And uh, X of B, Y of B, we call the terminal point. Okay, right. And so uh, again, that just goes back to this idea that not only do we know the shape of the path, we get this idea of motion along the path, where it begins and where it ends. We also get a direction out of it, right? So you could see which direction it was traveling as time moved forward. So there's a whole lot of information that comes out of these uh, parametric equations. All right, we'll do more in another video. Um, that's it for now.